City Councilman Ken Smith joining us from District 3, talking about a lot of things going on over in the Hickson area. Uh, Ken is not only a City Council member, he's also Vice Chair of the whole thing. Ken, good to see you, buddy. Good to Thanks see you, Thanks so much for coming no, in and joining us. Me. If this table was not here, I swear I would get down on my knees and bow to you <laughs> about your work in getting North Point Boulevard paved, finally. Thank How many you. years has your office been fielding complaints about that? Four years and however many days since the last election. <laughs> uh, it, it's been a nonstop thing. It was one, it was an issue that I discussed in my first campaign back in 2013, mm -hmm. back in actually 2012 uh, when I started, and it was one of those things I committed to getting done. So it took a lot longer than we'd liked, but with all of the hoops we had to go through, being a private, uh, partially private road, partially public road. Right. Uh, it took a tremendous amount of work pulling a lot of different organizations together in order to be able to get it done. Now the city has actually taken over that road from Hickson Pike up to 150. That's correct. The right. whole thing now. It was two-thirds city and about one-third private with uh, upwards, I believe we got to 13 different property owners mm -hmm. that were responsible for that one-third section. So it was it was a lot of digging to, to even just identify those. And it's no secret that in years past, they put patches on top of the potholes that had been put on top of another irregularity right. in the road. You got in there and you found out you had to go all the way down and start right. from literally the bottom up. Yeah, I mean, and this all, this actually, it took research all the way back to 1988 mm -hmm. to find a road contribution agreement and who had signed that because that private section was really just a dead end cul-de-sac road. So it wasn't put in to handle the kind of traffic that came years and years later. So the base work and things of that nature just weren't there because they didn't expect that road to ever be all the way through. Because North Point handles 10 to 12,000 vehicles a day. Tremendous number of vehicles. And they're not all smaller cars like you and I do. No, There's not at all. The big, not at uh, all. big trucks. Those tractor trailers even that I've seen going up and down that road. And you guys are to be committed for getting it done because once all the I's were dotted and the T's were crossed, the actual job itself got done and how long? It's pretty it, it right actually, we, would, we had hoped for uh, only a week to a week and a half, but some of the issues that we ran into, even beyond what we expected, took a little longer, but mm -hmm. it was less than a month, I think, total to well, get it all done. I can tell you this, without doubt, if you Google <laughs> the amount of letters to the editor, both the paper and the Chattanooga.com, that North Point Boulevard was one of the top. I think it was one of the top for sure. It certainly was. It was definitely the top that I heard about. All right, let's shift gears here a moment sure. and talk about the senior tax freeze. Yes. Yes. So this is an issue that I've talked about for quite a while, and it was earlier this year, especially after people received their new assessments, and we're seeing uh, really tremendous growth in our base as far as an economy around the city of Chattanooga and even the entire county. We're seeing a lot of property values go up. Uh, this is a good thing. You know, people look at it and they're like, well, property values go up. My taxes probably are. Uh, in, the, in some cases, that's true. In some cases, it's not. Uh, but it is our biggest investment. I, you know, I always want to make sure my property is worth more sure. and more. Um, but it is one of those things that we, we saw a lot larger increases than we expected. Mm -hmm. And that really brought this issue back to light even more than it had been before. So I started pushing on the city to look at what it would take to implement the senior tax freeze, which is something that the state legislature allowed local governments to implement uh, all the way back to 2007. Uh, the city had never implemented it in the past. Uh, we've asked about it, but again, it just hasn't been one of those hot topics at that time. Right. Um, but once we're really starting to see how much growth we're having, and it's not just growth in our current property base or our values of our property, but really an expansion. And as, uh, as our community grows further and further, we're really encroaching upon a lot of historic neighborhoods uh, that are traditionally poor neighborhoods in some cases. Mm -hmm. And if not poor, they are also senior neighborhoods. So as that starts to happen, those price value, you know, the, the property values sure. really start to increase and threaten some of our seniors yeah. uh, to be pushed out of their own homes. All right, and you've got some more paving projects that are on the road, bouncing back to North Point sure. Boulevard here in a moment. Hopefully we'll get you to come back in a few weeks and elaborate on that yeah, a little I'd love bit more. To. Uh, great guy, Ken Smith, uh, active through leadership, Chattanooga. You're yes. actually their alumni chair, is that right? I was, uh, I was previously, so been all the way through that. It, it really was a good eye opener. to. I went through leadership Chattanooga and I think you were in it was a long time ago. I was going to say you were in junior high. Uh, Ken Smith, always a pleasure. Thanks Ken, so much. Thank you so much. You're always, always welcome to, be to get on. in touch thank with you. Ken Smith. Uh, you can find him all throughout District 3. You can stop by 1000 Lindsay Street, or you can check out his direct email, and that is kensmith at chattanooga.gov. Again, kensmith at chattanooga.gov. Hang in there. We're back with more of Let's Chat right after this.